Hi, I'm Lips from the band Anvil, and this is my rig. <laughs> the pedal board is a fundamentally basic thing, of course, a tuner, a distortion unit, which is a 1980s Tokai distortion, which is ultimately very, very important. It's a very, very smooth, full sounding distortion. This is an EQ. The EQ is generally for when I'm not using a Fender Twin. I take my pedal board and let's say I have to plug it into a Marshall, I can adjust the tone slightly to compensate for the difference between what I'm normally using, a Marshall. And of course, a, a stereo digital delay so I can get, you know, slap back there. So these are standard Fender Twins. They're completely run totally clean. Um, JBL Fender speaker, JBL Fender speaker, two JBL 15s. This is uh, this is a dual Showman bottom. I've, what I've done is I've stripped off all the Tylex off everything and put metal grating for just the heavy duty eyes and a lot less damage. All the original cloths got ripped years ago. I bought these Fender Twins in probably 1976 used so yeah they're old and they work fucking great this is the the main volume but the the tones are all on 10 the master is at 10 which is run clean it's completely clean it's usually in order to get distortion you turn this up and turn this down so it's the other way so it's completely crystal clear sound um, and that's how the twins are run. These are these are just adjusted to, to make it the appropriate tones. And that could be anything for anybody. An interesting thing is, of course, I'm using uh, goosenecks here. This is this is very unusual. You don't usually see this kind of thing. And I learned this from uh, Aerosmith, actually. Many, many years ago, I opened for Aerosmith, and this is what they had on their Marshall cabinets, and I went, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing, and I've been doing that ever since. That's since the, the early 80s. Now, the guitars are completely an, another another story. I've got four of these all, all together. There was 10 made. They don't exist. The company's out of business. They're semi-hollow flying Vs. Fundamentally, and basically, they're an ES-335 with a V body. You know, you got a half block that's only from here down. So this is all hollow in here, you know, so um, ebony fretboard. I didn't bother getting, um, you know, the white stuff or whatever. If I need a fret job, it makes it a lot easier to, to deal with without having binding, right? So I haven't needed one yet, but thank goodness. And uh, the pickups in the guitar are made by a, a guy in out in Canada, in the Western Canada, hand, hand wired. They're called Seigel pickups, and uh, generally speaking, they're, they're virtually the same as Gibson burst buckers. And of course, the uh, Kaler, Kaler tremolo system, which is also another endorsement of, of mine, and uh, great, great, great stuff. I mean, there's only once in the, in the set that I use my tone and I use the bass pickup for the solo, but generally my, my treble's always at 10 and so is my volume, I never really, I turn it down when I'm not, when I'm talking at the microphone, but just so that it doesn't squeal or pick up the monitors. I'm using a wireless, I use a Line 6 wireless. They're Dunlops, one millimeter grip on it, so when I get sweaty I don't lose it. That's about it. We just finished 40 dates here in the United States and uh, tonight's the last show. So uh, we'll be back in the, in the US probably next May. So it's not gonna be for a while, that's next year. So uh, at this point, we're gonna finish up here today and then uh, starting next week, we've got about 25 shows in Canada, in regional mostly and, and out east, not west. Why? We don't go out west, no time. We only had a certain amount of time, so we filled up the, the dates. 
in around our home, uh, Ontario and Quebec, and a, a bit out, a few shows out east. Then we have a show in Los Angeles uh, for the release of the Anvil, second release of the Anvil movie. Uh, anybody interested in that, it's actually great because they're re-releasing the Anvil movie with uh, 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 with extra added stuff to explain what we've done since. <laughs> And it will be coming out sometime in September. The 1st of October, we're, we start our tour in Europe. And there's 60 shows all through Europe, starting in uh, starting in, in England. Actually, I think, I believe it's in Edinburgh is the first show. So we're in uh, Scotland to right to begin with. So yeah, it's uh, very exciting. Very, I'm, very, I'm looking very much forward to going to Europe. Um, Mostly because it, we're going to finish up what we started a, a couple years ago when we were so rudely interrupted and had to come home uh, because of COVID. And uh, we got 17 shows in the last uh, the last tour when there was a 60-day tour and it was really disappointing to be going home. And now we're going to go back with yet another album. So there's we got to basically and fundamentally we have to... Uh, we have to promote two albums worth of material, which is next to impossible. You can't make up for a lot. You can't make up for that, you know, and make everybody happy. It's not going to happen because you can't add too many new songs because then you're going to kill it for the old fans who expect to hear the old stuff. So, you know, we'll add some new stuff, but it's not. We're not going to overwhelm it so that it becomes noxious to watch. <laughs> You know, for old fans, old fans, for the most part, only know us for our first three albums. So that's pretty much a consistency that always stays in our set. The, uh, stuff from the first three albums, and then we kind of dilly dally and rally stuff around from the, everything else that we've done ever since.